tenor trombone, and uh, there's a bass trombone and an alto trombone and a soprano trombone and a contrabass trombone. So we got a lot of different sizes. And uh, trombone goes back to the uh, Baroque ages, and then they had a funny name called the sack butt. Trombone, of course, a lot of people associate it with jazz because uh, that's its natural habitat. But then there's a whole world of the classical trombone. There's usually three trombones in an orchestra, two tenors and a bass. But then there's the brass band world, the concert bands, wind ensembles. Uh, and then for crazy trombone players, there's trombone choir and trombone quartet. And, and that's a lot of fun. If, you have, if you've never heard uh, eight or 12 trombones together, it's an incredible sound. brass player and the vocalist share one special thing in common, and that is the brass player makes the pitch with the body part, and that's our lips. And the vocalist makes their pitch with the vocal cords. That's not, far, that's not that far away from the brain, actually. You know, it's just pretty close. So, um, uh, you know, and no other instruments share that same association. All brass players have to, to conceive the, the sound and the pitch in their head. Then it's transferred to here, then it's transferred to the mouthpiece, and then it, you send that message into the instrument. And if, if, the, if the brass player doesn't hear the pitch, or then they, you know, I, I do this with my own students, they have to be able to hear the pitch and transfer it to here, and then the instrument will, will basically do what you want it to do. Um, and that's how people get a great tone, is, is this, this center of sound and center of pitch first before you play. So many days I'll start my day in the car, you know, I'll, I'll have my mouthpiece, and uh, I have, you know, about a 45-minute commute, and without uh, turning on the radio or anything, I'll just start playing or start buzzing something on the mouthpiece, and in my mind, I will know exactly what pitch that is. Well, I'm buzzing an F, I'm buzzing a C or whatever, and, and on the mouthpiece. And, and when I get to work, if that pitch, cent pitch center is correct, when I pick up my horn, bingo, you know, that's, that's exactly the pitch that I was buzzing all along. <laughs> that's a B flat, better be. And I know that that pitch, I, that last pitch I just played is a B flat. So it, the, the whole world of, of brass playing, I think, is, is essential to, to the brass player, a very good brass player, to have that pitch in their mind even before they play. And, and, and that, this way, if you sing, on, if you sing in your mind, then it's just, and it happens very easily on, on, the, on the instrument. I'm sending the message from my brain to my lips and all the muscles that are around my face determine uh, what, what pitch I, I make. The instrument is just uh, an, uh, sort of an aid in some ways. It's aiding, it's allowing this pitch to happen. One of the keys to the success of the classical trombone players is ultimate control of how you move the slide. That's the key uh, for that in, in classical trombone is to have complete control of the slide where you don't show any glissando at all. And uh, so if you play a scale, <laughs> That's very, I'm very careful how to move the slide, and that you can play a scale not carefully. You know, 
a lot of glissandi that I was making. So glissandi, something like that. Uh, if you played, let's say, uh, you know, Mahler three, okay, and you use the same technique, it would sound like this. Okay, so that doesn't really work. My father was a trumpet player, and, and, and he played here, here in New York at the Metropolitan Opera. So, and my mother sang at the opera also. So when I was, then we moved out to California, and my father, I would watch my father warm up on the trumpet. So I kind of gravitated to that, and, and I, I probably begged him, you know, if he, he, to start me on the trumpet, and he did. He started me on cornet, and I did that for several years but always had trouble with the high register on, on, the, on the trumpet. And my father came in one day and said, why don't you just try this trombone, you know? And I reluctantly tried it and found that I had a, a fantastic high register on the trombone, you know, right at a very young age. So, and I think the reason why, he, he knew brass pretty well. His father was a trumpet player, my grandfather. But it's just, I think this is not true for everybody, but for my, in my case, just the size of the mouthpiece fit my face better. And, and um, so that's how I ended up on the trombone. And I didn't really know what I would do with the trombone. It wasn't something that I was interested in. And until I um, started listening to J.J. Johnson and also uh, the Chicago Symphony uh, Low Brass uh, came out with a record, educational record, where they played orchestral excerpts, excerpts as a group. And then I got to hear the trombone section by themselves in four-part harmony uh, with the tuba. And that really interested me. And, and I, you know, I, I started to get you know, recordings and listen to all kinds of repertoire. And, and the teachers in San Francisco at that time were fantastic. They all had played in the San Francisco Symphony. So a lot of times it's it's you know who you study with too and 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 I think I was lucky in that in that way in our uh, high school we had a great jazz band and good high school music par department and I uh, went to the aud audition for the, uh, the thing Monterey Jazz Festival had a a a band high school band that they put together so I did that for two years and got to work with the Heath Brothers and and uh, Bill Evans and all these great jazz players, and uh, so I I got more and more into that. And there was a a uh, trombone, uh, not a trombone, a music competition called sponsored by Pepsi Cola in San Francisco, and uh, it, there were four divisions: brass, woodwinds, piano, and strings. And so I entered this competition and I won. And the prize was a great competition, was a chance to solo with the San Francisco Symphony. $500, back then it was pretty good, and also a uh, two-week tour of Europe. All expenses paid. And that year the piano winner was Jeff Kahane. Everybody has to be encouraged. You know, and, and I think when you're encouraged and, and there's some kind of success that happens, you know, you, you ramp it up and you, you want to practice more and you want to study more and it it's, gives you a boost of confidence.